Hey guys, it's been a while since I've posted anything on here and it's been quite busy in the past. I have not moved home, I would say, but I'm back in Denmark for a little while as I'm continuing to build my business. And in that regard as well, I have just launched my first preset pack. And while I don't encourage you necessarily to buy it, I wanted to show you how I made it and what the purpose of it is, because I think it's quite different from most preset packs that you otherwise have as this is a modular pack that's supposed to try and help you to become better at editing and understanding editing in Lightroom at a better level. Instead of just applying a preset, that's then just it, more or less, and then you can adjust it from there. Then I build it in different modules from how Lightroom is built up so that you can make your own workflow and you can kind of like edit the different modules in Lightroom with this one. The cool thing about it is that it also works with presets that you already bought or if you edit from the bottom up yourself then you can use it along the way or afterwards to adjust your edit and just do however you like it. So I thought I would just edit one of my photos today and I've cheated a little bit because I kind of know what I want to do already but kind of just to show you if you have a vision already or if you don't how quick it can be to at least make the base edit and then you can go from there. So let's head into Lightroom and let me show you what I'm talking about. So now we're inside Lightroom and this is the photo we'll be talking about. This is one that's shot of me, obviously, from a waterfall in Bali. And on the left out here, you can see that we have my preset pack, my modular pack V1. And the cool thing about it is that you buy, when you buy it, if you buy the version one or if you buy any other version, you will continuously get the updates as well. And I will continue to update it as I get better editing myself and as I explore different styles and variations. So I will continue to update it with new features and new stuff all the time. So if you buy it already, then you'll just get an email with the new version whenever there's a new version out free of charge. So anyway, the way that I set up my editing, as you might've seen in some of my other videos, if you've seen those, is that I kind of rearranged my workflow over here. So, if you just customize it in here, I have uh, lens correction, transform, something I don't use that much, but then tone curve, basics, calibration, color grading, HSL color, detail and effects. That's kind of how my workflow is and how I work through it. And I'll show you that in this edit as well. So the first thing that we will do is we will go to the tone curve and we don't actually need to do anything over here because we have the preset pack. So as you can see, as I hover over these different presets, this only affects the point curve the tone curve in here and the point curve. So I haven't actually added anything in the RGB curves yet, that will come later. But for now, this is where it's at. So the point curve. And as I scroll through these, these three first ones are my favorite ones to use. Then I have some that fades the blacks a little bit as that's the kind of style I want sometimes. And then there's just like your regular S curves as you will. But let's see for this one, I think we'll go with this one, tone curve point high mid two. I don't know about the naming of these, but whatever, it works. And it's kind of supposed to try and tell you what's supposed to happen. So this is an S curve, but as you can see, the, the mid tones are raised over here. So that's that's the purpose of this one. So that's kind of just to get the base edit started. Then what's not included in the preset pack is covering like the temperature, the tint, the exposure, contrast, as the contrast you can say is kind of the tone curve and then the highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. That's kind of something you have to adjust on your own. As it's very individual what works. So what I always do is I apply the tone curve first and then I go in and edit a little bit in the basic panel. So I think we'll turn up the highlights a little bit and then we'll turn up the shadows quite a bit because it was shot quite dark. And you can see that my skin tones are a little bit yellowish. So I kind of want to turn down the uh, white balance just a little bit then we get some more blues into the waterfall as well and that just helps a little bit with my skin tones as well so that's the first thing that we do then we can continue on and it's not that the basic panel isn't covered at all so you can see that i actually have these clarity and texture presets as well and what they do is that inside the texture and clarity down here they just add a little bit of that and i think for this photo I want to add just a little bit. So that's maybe two. And that just adds 10 on each basically. So, but it's just an easy way to quickly do it. And if we zoom in then you can kind of see the difference between them, but I like to edit subtle. I might add some that are a little bit more aggressive, but these are kind of subtle in the beginning. 
Then haze and dehaze is something that I'll not go into in this one because we don't really need it, but it's something that I've used a lot lately. And I love to use the dehaze slider. And this is just kind of, it's easier to see what it does when you just scroll through these instead of having to like scroll through the slider sometimes, just to get an idea of is this gonna work or not? And then you can always adjust the dehaze tool afterwards. My brands might go just one, just to add a little bit that I've just added 10 in my brands. Then the calibration, oh, let's just close this one and go to calibration. This is something I've worked quite a bit on and I will add many more. These are kind of subtle to my style. My favorite ones are the uh, C1 and C2 and then the E1 and E2. And I think for this one, the E2 fits quite good. So as you can see, it kind of complements my skin tones a little bit more and also brings a little bit of blue into the uh, waterfall as well. So I think this calibration is pretty good. This is what it does. You're welcome to copy it if you want. As said, I'm not bugging you to buy the preset pack at all, but this is what the E2 does and I've calibrated them differently. Again, it's quite subtle and throughout my edits, these are quite subtle changes usually. So if we go to history, I think we can click here and then you can see the difference so far. So it's, it's quite, with quite a few tools, we've actually gone from this very flat image to this already. So a lot more power and contrast into it. But let's continue. So let's get back at it. Now the next one is color grading. This has been a little bit tricky for me to figure out like how to make the best ones. So it kind of started out with making these ones and I've kept them in the preset pack as they work for some things, but sometimes they're a little bit too rough as they go into the global tab as well. So you can see if we choose this one, it actually has over in the uh, in the global tab, I've added some as well. And for some, it works, could maybe work for this one, but my favorite ones are these ones down here. And TOO is teal, orange, orange, or teal, teal, orange. So what it basically does is, I think this one works quite well for this edit. So this grading is basically just adding some teal in the shadows, in the midtones, and the highlights as well. And you can of course adjust those as we will, but I've left the global alone in this one. And then for the uh, color grading is the next one. And this is probably one, or not the color grading, so the H HSL and color is probably the one that I will be doing most edits to along the way. I really want to make some that fit better with the subjects as well, but this is quite easy to adjust. So I think for this one, we'll go with the the warm red sunset, as I think this complements my skin tones and the waterfall quite good in this one. And then the last ones I've added is some grain. I don't really use those that much myself, but I think they're fun to have. And I know a lot of people edit with kind of like that nostalgic kind of grain vibe. So yeah, I've added those in. I use them sometimes myself. They can add some detail and contrast as well if you edit for uh, Instagram, something like that. I'll leave that alone for now. I haven't added something with the sharpening, but what I usually do is hold down my option key, I'll mark in my sharpening, and then the white lines are kind of what you can see will be sharpened, and then I'll just turn off the sharpening. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it makes a little bit. So that's basically what we've done with just the preset and a little bit of adjustments in the basics panel. Now, what I think is cool is that you can always go back, so you can say like, okay, this is not necessarily our final image, but Maybe we want to do some subject masking in a minute as well, but you can go back and you can say, oh, maybe this calibration works better. Um, maybe I actually want another point curve up here. So I want some more contrast. Maybe I want the blacks to be more faded. Uh, maybe I just want a regular tone curve. And then you can go in and you can adjust your highlights and your shadows afterwards as well. I like it how it is now. And I said, I, I kind of knew what I was going to do. The last thing that's not included in this pack, but I'm really considering making a pack on, is some more masking. So let me just quickly show you what I would do with this image. First, I'd use the AI tool to mask my subject out, which is myself. I'd probably highlight the shadows a little bit more and the highlights just to make me stand out. I'd probably increase the clarity on myself as well and a little bit more texture. Maybe decrease the contrast a little bit. And then what I would do for this particular image is that I choose the brush tool and I just brush over my waterfall. I'll just do it very quickly for this tutorial so that you can see, but this is kind of what it does. And because I have the uh, auto masking on, you can see that it kind of has a hard time masking everything. That's kind of on purpose. It's only trying to do the bright areas first. And yes, and so like, 
this. I'm not, I would probably go a little bit more in depth, but for this tutorial, let's just keep it at that. I'll turn down the temperature a little bit, but just because I like the waterfall a little bit more blue. And I'll probably crank up the clarity just a little bit on this one as well, just because I like it being a little bit more punchy. Turn down the whites a little bit and then turn off the highlights just slightly. It's not done a huge difference. It's made a little bit more blue and a little bit more punchy. You can see from myself, the subject, it's done a little bit. It makes me stand out a little bit more, separates me a little bit more from the background. And then the last two things that I would like to do is make a linear gradient up here because this was where the light was coming from. And then I will turn up the highlights and I will turn down the dehaze just to give this kind of like soft look and turn it in here. And then I will actually go in and take my brush tool and copy that by command C. Then I'll go in here and copy that in with command V. And then I'll actually make a subtract. That means that my mask will now not hit what I made before because I already adjusted the brightness of this one. So I don't really want that to be affected. I want the surroundings to be affected. So this is what that's done. And then the last thing I might do is to do the opposite. I'll do a linear gradient down here. First off, I'll just make like tone down shadows, tone down the highlights, and then I might subtract the subject. Let's see how that works. I think that's pretty good. So you can see I've just like countered what's coming in here as it being more dark in here. This is kind of how I would edit this photo, at least if I had to do it quite quickly. I might turn down the highlights a little bit on my face, but I kind of like how it turned out. And then if we go down to see how it was before. So we said this is the before, this is before we did anything, the raw image. And then this is the edit that we came up with. Most of it, as you saw, was done completely with just the preset pack. And I could encourage you to actually do this yourself if you just have your own presets. Instead of making a big preset with everything in it, you can split it up like this. And the way that you do it is just that you can uh, hit the plus button, create preset, make sure that nothing is checked. And then if you want to do it for just the tone curve, as you saw mine, you just hit the tone curve and that only uh, saves that. And then you can add now the support, the amount slider. So another thing that you can do is that, let's say you wanted this one instead, but then you might just tone it down a little bit. So like 80 maybe. And then you can adjust the strength of the preset as well. So this is how it works. This was a quick tutorial. I just wanted to show you the pack. It's available on my website. If you are keen to buy it or interested, it helps me out a lot to make these YouTube videos as well as I'm not monetized yet and just in general. But I said, I'm not forcing me into anything. I'll keep making editing tutorials as well so you can see how I work. And it's no secret what I've done in here. Some of it is a little bit basic as well, but I'll keep expanding it a set. And yeah, I really, if you if you grab it, let me know if it helped you or if it you find it interesting or if you want more preset packs like this. Uh, I really enjoyed making it and I just wanted to get it out there and really hope that it helps people to, to, to learn editing more and understand what it does instead of just applying a big preset pack and then or like one final preset and then just being like, what did it do to my image? Sometimes just look good and sometimes that's just what you're looking for, but you're looking for something that can help you understand what the different parts does and how you can adjust things along the way. Also maybe just apply a preset and then kind of go through these settings and adjust along the way. I see like, oh, maybe this choke curve could work better or yeah, whatever. You saw the preset pack and how it works. So instead of just rambling on, that's uh, what I have for you today. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to getting back to creating a lot more videos for you guys. So until next time, take care.